um, when we say come and support other sports, it's not because we just want to abandon maybe football, athletics, or basketball. Mm. It's because mm. we have talent right there. And all of the ladies, they've been winning their games. The Egyptians are winning for the women, and we are also winning for the women. We have not lost to any Egyptian yet, and the only people they've been beating are their compatriots, and that's because most Nigerians you know, registered for this. So that's the update for now. We're expecting when it gets to the quarterfinals in the under 19s, under 21s, mm. then we'll get to intense. And we'll see, we also had fans there mm. coming to chair yeah. with their little proposalers or what do we call this? That's, that's, a, Just, that, mm. that's a family. Uh, they came to support their, uh, their son. They actually lost to the Egyptian under 20s. But when I spoke to the president of the Nigeria Table Tennis Federation, he said he was a nobody. In table tennis, but this 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 has given him an opportunity to compete. He competed with the junior African African junior champion, mm. an Egyptian, and he was able to get one out of him. He ended three one. But this is a guy that has never played competitive but, table but tennis. You can't quantify the amount of experience that that, that, that this has offered him. There you mm. go. Anyway, let, let's pause a little bit, listen to some officials of the African Table Tennis Federation, and of course uh, some of the Nigerian players as well um, at the IWTF World Tour, and then we'll come back for more. On sports tonight. Yeah, I, I know Egypt they are a big trade now, but at this at this time I am fully prepared and I, this is home soil. I know with the supporters and all of that, it's going to be a different thing. Though the game is going is 50-50, but but this time we are ready for them. There are some Nigerians here that nobody knows them, but they are playing great. So I think uh, no nobody. I think everybody is capable of causing an upset, and uh, I think there, there are going to be several upsets in this tournament. Uh, it's not going to be very easy for, every, for everyone, but for sure only one person will win. Uh, luckily, I am here uh, for the third year in a row for this Lagos Open. Uh, I'm so happy about this event. It's uh, one of the uh, well uh, professional organization. Actually, the World Tour event is one of the most uh, prestigious events for the table tennis worldwide. And we are happy that uh, Africa is a part of this through the Nigerian Open. Uh, we started with some players in the previous years. I believe that number of players are growing year by year. For sure, it is, will be uh, very much uh, contribution to table tennis in Nigeria and in Africa. Because <coughs> the number of Africans in this event, not only from Nigeria, are more than any other uh, event w uh, in Europe or in Asia or whatever. Then uh, we uh, highlight this event and would like to help always Nigeria to host it every year for the better promotion of table tennis inside Nigeria and inside Africa. All right, so those are reactions uh, coming through from the ongoing IWTF um, World Tour uh, taking place inside the Moladi Okoya Thomas uh, Hall. Uh, of the Teslim Balogun Stadium. All right, still go. Uh, enjoy the best of table tennis tomorrow. Uh, starts from uh, as early as uh, 9, 10 in the morning, and they play up till very late at night, although there's a little break in the afternoon for these players to go catch uh, some rest. So um, avail yourself of the opportunity and go and see uh, what table tennis is doing, uh, the amount of fun and the excitement and the atmosphere uh, of table tennis uh, in Nigeria. All right, um, Austin, I'm also, um, thank you so much for, for your time. Uh, tomorrow is another day. We'll find out exactly what's going on. Once again, go out there, support Team Nigeria. Let the chunk of that prize money stay back here uh, for our own um, uh, players. We'll go on a quick break now. Uh, of course, uh, we are in the season of uh, UEFA Champions League, but yesterday we spoke about it. It was seven goal trailer at the Santiago Bernabeu. Uh, Schalke were trying the impossible. They almost got it. But at the end of the day, Madrid were able uh, to sneak in to the next round of the competition despite losing 4-3 at home. Let's bring you that highlight now. Real Madrid against Schalke. And then we'll come back, uh, update you with what's going on around uh, uh, some of the venues in the UEFA Champions League. And then Dumna Kunta will be joining us. We'll take a look at Nigerian teams as well, getting ready for their own calf continental engagements this weekend. Join us again. All right, so um, at that point, it was 2-2, but at the end of the day, um, Schalke edged out uh, Madrid, four goals to three. Madrid, on the side of the first leg victory, um, qualified uh, for the next round. Well, we've made a change now 
um, Dumna Dio Konta has, has joined us now uh, on Sports and I will be taking a look at Nigerian teams getting ready uh, for the continent um, later on. But before we do that, let's just quickly um, update you with um, results of uh, matches currently going on. And uh, of course, I'll tell you about the drama at the Stamford Bridge. Um, both games, I think, now about half time now. Uh, but then uh, the first game, which is uh, really the game that everybody has been focusing on, Chelsea against PSG, still goalless. But then Chelsea have an advantage in that PSG are down a man. And yeah. it says Latan Ibrahimovic, and, uh, and they have a really good, really good advantage too from mm. the first leg. So um, he got uh, he got he got the straight red uh, for his um, vicious tackle on um, um, Oscar. So that um, eventually means uh, PSG will end this game with ten men if they can sustain the pressure. But uh, Chelsea will be a bit relaxed. PSG one man down. I mean, can't relax because uh, no, I, I mean, now, I mean, but now because when you get a red card from the side for the position, what they need, they need to do? And if you play like Ibrahimovic, who is your arrowhead? No, they need to regroup. I you know what it means when a team who has the, who has the who has the at disadvantage when they regroup, they may come out stronger. So you have mm. to be a bit relaxed so that you don't you don't think pushing forward will end you a goal. Um, but Chelsea see has the the upper hand because that key man. Uh, in Brown movies, could have, if he's only a threat mm. to every, every defense, mm. he's out of the game. Mm. So, And of course, o o if he stays this way, advantage Chelsea, the away goal yeah. um, suits them. So it, it, the, the longer he stays this way for Chelsea, the better. Although they will need to be careful to be wary of PSG, as Doom Nodi said, 10 men sometimes could be more dangerous than 11. The flying goals probably today, uh, with 10 men, they were able to get three goals. Uh, against uh, against Congo, but then Ibrahimovic getting a red is surely a massive setback yes. uh, for PSG. So sometimes um, the red card to a team always, you know, it's a two-edged sword. It's for or against. It, it now beholds on Chelsea, you know, to make it count. 